But if I were to go back, you know, let's just say to coming out of uh, coming out of selection, right? How different are you as an athlete uh, and a person just from that event? I mean, your perspective on like what is hard, um, what's difficult and what you can and can't do, like obviously changes dr- dramatically when you go through an experience like that. Um, it's hard to probably quantify like how much it has affected, you know, me and my, my personal and athletic career, but it'd be hard to believe that it hasn't like to some degree, you know? Um, yeah. When you just go through something that, that challenging, it's obviously going to change you for the better. So was that 16 or 17? That was years ago? 16. Right. I just got the five year notification. Oh, nice. On, uh, like Facebook or something. So how, like that. so yeah. how different is your body? From, from as what? an athlete in the last five years, how how much has it changed? It's probably about the same. I mean, I I haven't I've been right around 180, 185 pounds ever since I came into the sport. Um, obviously, changed some some training things based off what event I want to do, but it's not like I've been super skinny or really muscular. I've always been kind of the same build. Like even when I did selection, I was probably probably the same size that I am right now, just focusing on on different things in training. Uh, have you put your name in for the Go Ruck Games? No, I didn't know that it was something you had to apply for. Uh, like you should I'm, do that. I don't. I'm not a fan of like applying for things. Like well, when you know people love doing like game shows, like American Ninja Warrior. Uh, Tight games, you know, Broken Skull Ranch, whatever the. I think case this is maybe. a little. I think this is a little different. This is, is like I don't know. Like I, somebody I, said, you had to apply, and I'm like, dude, that's not for me. Like, I'm okay, good. no, no, I I respect that. I just think it's one of those things that it's not like Ninja Warrior. It's like if you apply, you're probably going to get in because of what you just did or what you had been doing, right? Like this guy clearly should be there. Like, well, then wouldn't they just send me an email and say, hey, uh, no, Go Ruck has no idea who you are. Though that's the that's the issue. Them as a company don't know anything, so they're they're relying on like savage and me to like help them and say this is who you should probably pick like they're going to pick a couple of their guys right they're going to pick you a couple gotta, you got to throw my name in the hat well man. i i certainly i i will i'm actually talking to him tomorrow i think there was a deadline but i think they can't i'm not sure if they can honor it because they didn't even announce it it was one of those things that they also didn't do themselves any favors waiting so long no but, it came it came in and right and then it was like gone like right. i don't yeah yeah well listen i'm talking to that guy today or tomorrow uh let me I'll make a note here because obviously like, you know, they're giving away 15 K that's not nothing. Right. Um, I wonder what they're like the events are going to be like, what, what they'll have us do. So, so what they said was like three components, right? Like, like there's an obstacle course race of some kind, right? There's a, there'll be a bunch of, uh, like, carrying heavy stuff in short bursts kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then some rucking. So there's probably going to be like a mile ruck or something because they that's their whole thing. Maybe I'll just like watch the first season, see how it goes. All right. Now, listen, I, don't know. I mean, it's I think it's I think it's 15K first place, 5K second place. Um, but, you know, everyone's doing it. Chris R is doing it. Anybody who's been doing the deck of high rock stuff was like, hey, how do I get in on that? I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of random age groupers that applied too, but I do think it's they're going to take – they are going to take the best people. So um, we'll talk offline about it, but I think yeah. we can get it. If you can make the travel work that yeah. weekend. Um, what month is it in? April. Mm. Like they want CrossFit athletes, but of course it's short notice and right in the middle of the game season. So they're not And that's like right – that's a right before getting ready for High Rocks Nationals too – or Worlds – how Rock's World is May, right? Right. But like, dude, April is going to be like. No, I know. That's like the important time, you know? So. What's the, yeah, you want to be the world champ, right? Like that's clearly where it's at, right? I do. I do. Um, I actually had no idea how close I was to the world record in Chicago. I was so focused. I mean, I, I looked at my watch a couple times, but it never like registered and even when someone on course like i think Magita mentioned it who 
dropped out of the race. Um, it he turns, mentioned, you know, do you know why he dropped out? It turns out the sled is heavy. I don't know if you know that, right? Not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, what <do> you know? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, Sorry, buddy. no, we love you, man. Um, but yeah, like he, he mentioned it a couple times, like, Hey, you're, you're on world record pace, but I swear to God, it went like in one ear and out the other. Right. Cause I was just focused on staying in front of Hunter. Um, and then I got done and looked at my time and I was just like, no way. Like, ah, like, I mean, it clearly just wasn't meant to happen that day, but, um, man, that would have been huge. That would have been huge if I could have gotten that along with, you know, the, the title and also had done the world record the week before at DecaFit. Like it, that would have been pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, we'll give it another shot in a couple months. So we, I, we hope we get everybody there, right? All the travel, all the Germans, the UK, like that's, we want a world championship. You know what I mean? So I mm-hmm. hope they can all make it because I mean, I'm going to be there and I'm excited to, I'm excited to watch it. So are you, are you officially a hybrid racing guy now? Will we not see you at Spartan anymore? I wouldn't say that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the low hanging fruit is obviously stadium races. I'll still be doing stadium races, but I've got, I've got some other things coming up. Okay. You might see me, you might see me in, uh, San Luis Obispo. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, sometimes you just gotta step back in the old arena and let them know. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't take much for me to, to get ready for that race. I mean, I do a ton of running for, for high rocks anyway, in Decafit. Um, I would just have to, spend a few weeks specifying like some trails and some little more elevation gain and I could get myself ready. Um, and, and I'm kind of craving that, like I'm loving the hybrid fitness stuff, but there is a piece of me that, that does miss being out there in the dirt and the mud and doing obstacles. And, um, I don't think it'll ever be something I do like I did in the past. Like those days are definitely gone, but Um, if a race looks fun and interests me, like, yeah, I'm going to hop in. Well, you know, big bear is only a three hour drive. So if you're not too wiped out after high rocks, you can zip down and do big bear on Sunday. Oh God, (laughs) that's not going to go well. (laughs) Well, just come hang out with us then. Yeah. Just come to big bear and hang out with the, you know, the Spartan fam as it were. Ryan Kent, you were once upon a time on the Spartan pro team. What did you think? What did you think of the new Spartan roster, as they're calling it? What did you think of the new tiered system? I mean, my honest opinion is it's completely bogus. <laughs> and it's been, it's been that way for many, many years. And I'm, I'm no longer surprised, like, at anything. I mean, look, man. Like, and first of all, even the incentives for, like, some of these tiers. Like, even tier one, I'm like, dude, this is a joke. Like what in the world, like the days of what it used to be to where it is now, it's just like, we're going backwards in my personal opinion. Um, And the fact that they like, I mean, there's certain individuals that deserve the benefit of the doubt, whether or not they raced or didn't race you know, to, to qualify themselves to even be on the roster. Um, you know, and I, I won't name any names, but like, I don't know how, I mean, Jack came up with his, his tier system. Um, and that's fine. He's a smart guy, but, uh, I don't know, man. Like I'm, that's why I just do my own thing now. Um, I assume because like I do the DECA stuff, Um, I did the Dallas stadium last year, which I won. I did the Austin sprint, which I won. I mean, I didn't even get my name on the list. I wasn't even in any of the tiers. Yeah. You're not even tier three or development. I'm just like, dude, you're not even in the G league, bro. I know. And I'm over here setting world records, (laughs) but, uh, no, man, I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm doing my own thing now, you know, like I've got my job, um, that, that pays the bills racing and doing all that stuff. Uh, that's for fun now. And like all the money I make from that just goes into, you know, my savings account. Like I'm not 
it's not what it used to be. And uh, that doesn't mean I don't have a price, you know, if they want to pay me some money. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing my own thing right now. I'm going to let that be kind of what it is. I know, I know where my value is and kind of where I stand um, in the group. So but I think that's I think that's the benefit of experience and maturity. And you know, once upon a time, it meant a lot more. Like, ooh, I call myself Spartan Pro, right? And yeah. now it doesn't necessarily. And it's I think that's a sign of just being around longer and your own knowing your personal value. Everybody can like whether it's going in and asking your boss for a raise at a at a nine to five or asking for sponsorship deals. I couldn't help thinking, uh this idea of getting you in the Brown singlet and like, what can Brown do for you? Like, we got to make this happen. Like you're setting world records. Do you I like know, shit? Man. They could, so, you would do such a good service to them because it's not just that you work for them. You're a good guy. You're a dad. People like you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's win-win for all parties to get you in some kind of, you know, I don't know who to talk to. That's the thing. Like I know who my immediate boss is. They, but they and, need to find out. They need to jump a couple levels up and go, okay. "Hey, who in marketing is going to talk to who? Who in sponsorship? Go to fucking LinkedIn. I don't know. I know you don't like sending a lot of requests, but this moment might be worth it." Yeah, maybe you're right. It'll be easier to probably get days off then too. Right. Well, I mean, that's yeah. Like, that's oh kind of, yeah, he's going to go to this event and represent our business and company. And, right, which you would happily do because you actually like them. You like yeah. your job. You like, you know what I mean? It's the whole, the whole tie-in of it helps you train because you're lifting bot, like the whole thing. It's just come on. It's fine. <laughs> what am I, I fucking know. rocket scientist over know. here? You, you can be my agent. I mean, it's not like you work for you know. I don't know. It would be a bad example, but you know, like. Gogurt, you know what I mean? Like, oh well, this Gogurt really <laughs> helps me. Do you don't even know what Gogurt? You got to know what Gogurt yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. got. You got to. How old's your kid now? He just turned one. Oh, okay. All right. Well, pre pre Gogurt years, but <laughs> you'll get there. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, listen. I'm glad we caught up. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so it was good talking to you. So we'll see you. Will we see you before May or not? What do you mean oh, by yeah, we? You said, you said slow. We. The public. Oh, so you will no, be I have a couple. Of, so I'm going to do a DECA strong next month um, and try to have all three records. Who's got that. that record right now? This guy, Ryan, is, he's also a Ryan. Rich Ryan? No, uh, Ryan Cron- Corning or something. I'm, I'm, super, are, you being, are you being serious? It's another Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Um, super strong, fit guy. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't do well once you get him running, but okay. for the deck of strong, he's he's pretty tough to beat. But I'm only like four four or five seconds off. Right. Let's let let's quickly before I let you go, let's quickly talk about the other guys. Right. Who okay. who do you think's got who do you think's got the the other closest chance to to catch you? Rich, uh, Ryan, Cole, those guys. Who do you, who do you think's who do you think's p- could tweak a few things and be the next man up? From this weekend, uh, it's easy to say Rich Ryan, for sure. I mean, he's already like, I mean, if you look at OCR stars, like he's a great hybrid athlete. He's good at doing strength movements and running. And now that he's kind of bulked up and put on some mass, and obviously that sacrifices a, a little bit of your running, but he is so fast that he's he, he can give up a few seconds and still be, you know, fast enough. Um, and he showed this weekend that like the work he's been putting in, um, training and like on the nutritional side, like it's, it's paying off big time. And I think just based off what I've seen from him in the past and like these hybrid events, DecaFit, OCR stars, like he would be, I'd, I'd pick him over Magita right now to be the next man in line, like without a doubt. And he's moving, so he's moving to Denver in, in early February, so just a couple weeks. So I'm going to have me a little hybrid hybrid training buddy. I told him, I was like, dude, we got to – if you want to train with me, though, we gotta, we're going at like 5 a.m. And he's like, I don't know about that. Oh, he's a, he's a young man. He can do that. So <laughs> he's, not, yeah. he, he's older than me. How old are you? I'm, I just turned 36. Oh, wow. All you guys are getting up there, man. I know. You guys were in your late 20s when I met you. Bunch of whippersnappers. Crazy. Dude, dude, I'm 50 in a couple months. Five yeah, zero. That's crazy. 
I know I see some of those earlier pictures of you, Matt, when you were like <laughs> sideline reporting or something. <laughs> Like, look at this young buck. I know, dude. And and then I thought I was old. It's like you hit 40 and you think you're old. And then you hit approach 50 and you're like, fuck me. Um, but we want to end on a positive note. So uh, thanks for catching up, dude. Yeah, thank you, man. Good talking to you.